Hi, it's Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make the beautiful tiramisu block. This entire quilt, except for the borders, is made of this block over and over again and is absolutely beautiful. We'll be using some really cool rulers that help us with speed and accuracy, precision, and the blocks just click together and the quilt just went together like a dream. And you can imagine this quilt will be beautiful, an array of colors. So of course the Shabby Fabrics website has a wonderful array of, of batiks to screen printed cottons and everything in between, including flannel. So don't let the fact that this is a Christmas quilt slow you down. You can envision that in a variety of different colors and styles of fabric. Um, rulers. Let's talk about the rulers. There'll be three different rulers I'll be using today. A six and a half inch by 12 and a half inch creative grid ruler, kind of a standard ruler, but it's nice and small. We'll be using the simple seven eighths inch ruler. If you've not heard of this ruler, it's fairly new to me. I absolutely love this ruler and I'll be adding that absolutely to my own sewing room at, at the house. And the ultimate flying geese ruler, also from Creative Grid. You'll see me use that today and I'm absolutely hooked. I think I, I've done flying geese the old fashioned way with the rectangle and the squares in the corner and drawn the line and they never quite turn out quite the way I'm hoping for. They use a lot of fabric. I'm trimming a lot of fabric and throwing it away, which I don't like. You'll see how the Ultimate Flying Geese helps us save fabric. We use less fabric and the results are un undeniable. You'll absolutely be hooked. When you buy the three rulers as a set, you also get a fourth for free. And this is just a great value of being able to get all four Creative Grids rulers. You're only paying for three. And the fourth is, is included as a bonus. They're also available individually. So if you have some of these other rulers and just want to pick up one of them, you can do that as well. Um, we'll be using some other tools. I'll just walk you through that as we go through the block. So let's just get going. This, is, this block is now becoming one of my most favorite blocks. One of the first cuts that we'll be needing is we'll be uh, doing two and seven eighths inch in the corner. And this is where I love to use the simple seven eighths because normally when I'm using a standard ruler, let's, in fact, let's get a standard ruler here, just like this standard one inch ruler. And I'll use this as kind of my backdrop so you can see it. Normally with the one inch, I'm having to kind of fish around where, where is that seven eighths inch measurement? In this case, two and seven eighths. So I'm kind of like, where, where is this? And with enough hunting around, I can find it. But I have been off before and actually cut two and three quarters and not two and seven eighths. What I love about the simple seven eighths is it's truly simple. It takes all of the mystery away and you can't help but be correct. And I love that when things help me be accurate. So I'm just going to cut one real quick. So let me just cut a piece of that fabric. Just cut this away and we'll put that aside for now. So first thing I like to do when I have any piece of fabric that everything needs to be cut precisely is I like to start and square up. So I will just be bringing the ruler to my cutting mat as normal and establishing a nice clean edge. Now this is where the ruler just really shines. Notice how the first measurement is seven eighths, one and seven eighths, two and seven eighths. I just lie that right along the edge and I'm going to move that off of my grid. I don't want to be looking at the blue line and the line here. So I'm going to move that off my grid and now I'm just running that two and seven, that line right there. I'm not having to hunt around. It's, it's the main line, not a sub line and I'll be cutting. Then I'll simply turn to the side, clean up that edge once again, and we'll make one more cut. Two and seven eighths. I love, I love notions and rulers that truly make my life easier, more accurate, more fun. I'm all in. I absolutely love that. And we'll need to go ahead and simply cut corner to corner. And that's what these pieces are that are sitting right in here like this. Of course, download is available in the description box below. You can click on that. It'll tell you, take you right to the project sheet on the website. It'll show you what size to cut all these fabrics to, how many you'll need uh, to be cutting of each. Um, you can also go to the Shabby Fabrics homepage at the very bottom. There's a link that says free downloads. Click that 
It'll also take you to the project and then hundreds of other projects as well. We have so many videos there right now and more to come, of course. Please subscribe. There's stuff coming out all the time. That's how you use the simple 7H ruler and you can see how it really takes the mystery out of that. Here's another cut coming up four and seven eighths. We're gonna do this again, looks like. Let's just cut a piece for now. And I think we're good and squared up. In fact, let's just press that. If I didn't mention it sizing, I really reckon, I just saw the sizing, it made me think of it. When I was a younger quilter, early quilter, I was sizing, I didn't know a whole bunch about that and quilting and how did those things work together? I usually used it mostly in pressing my clothes, but I didn't use that for quilting in any way. I like it because it just gives it a little more body. It takes some of the stretch that's inherent in fabric away. It seems to mitigate that. And so I really do endorse using the um, magic sizing. A whole can's like a dollar. Just get a couple cans, put in your sewing room. You'll be so glad that you did. So we're cutting this one to four and seven eighths. I believe that was our measurement, yep. So again, we've cleaned up the edge. I'm gonna move that right off of there. I think it was actually already cleaned up. Four and seven eighths. Look at that, boom. How easy is that? Not fishing around and hoping that I found seven eighths. I absolutely found it. Clean that edge up one more time. We're lined up. Clean that edge. Scoot over to four and seven eighths. Cut once on the diagonal. And you would do this for a second time. And that's these places right here. Okay, so we'll put those aside. We will be using all of these pieces that I've, I've cut. So let's put that aside. Now, I like to use flannel design boards. We've cut most of the other pieces out ahead of time. So let's bring out the flannel design board. It is nothing more than a foam cord board covered with flannel. And why I love this is I get to see the block before I take it to my sewing machine to make sure I've laid it out properly. Now, some of these things we've already put out, so let's add to it. So we've already got that one. We just cut that together. Let me move this here so it's a better view for you. I've, you've probably heard me say before, and, and again, in the earlier days of my sewing, I wouldn't lay anything out ahead of time. I just took it to the sewing machine and thought I had the right orientation, and sometimes I did, and a lot of times I didn't. And I, boy, did I do a lot of seam ripping. I don't wanna do seam ripping. What's missing here are the flying geese, and that's, that's my favorite part about this whole thing, is the flying, getting to use the flying geese ruler is so much fun. You're gonna be hooked. What I love about this ruler is its versatility. So let's scoot that out of the way. In fact, let me put that up here. We're gonna be using the spinning mat. With the flying geese, fast flying geese ruler, the first thing we have to do is decide what size we want the flying geese uh, block to be. And of course, it's, I don't think of this rectangle as being a block, but in this instance, I'm referring to this as a block. If we know that this is cut to finish at four inches, this ruler is based on finished measurements. So if I want a two by four inch finished, I will look for two by four, and I do. This is four inches, and this is half of that. You can see how there's two of those. So this is a two by four. So in this instance, turn that the wrong direction. In this instance, let's look at our ruler. I'll use the red so you can see it a little bit easier or maybe just my hand. So they give you a picture. What I love about the fact that they put this on the ruler is sometimes I've lost the instructions on how to use a ruler. And when I go back to it later on, I'm like, I can't remember how to use this thing. You really don't need the paper version. You could use that if you want, but it's right here. The black part of a flying geese block is called the goose. The white part in this instance, in this pictorial is called the sky. And they let you know right here that for a two by four, you're going to follow letter D as in Delta. So for my black fabric, for what is, is displayed in black, I'll be cutting a five and a half inch square 
And see how that's a solid white? I think you can see that right there. They're saying that's your sky. That's going to be cut to seven inches. So this is my, let's going back to this again. This is my goose, right? Can we see that? That's my goose and this is my sky. And in this instance, that's nice and handy because they show white, we're using white. So of my goose, I'm going to need for a two by four inch rectangle, a five and a half inch square. So out of here, let's go ahead and use our other ruler and we can cut that to five and a half. You can see how these rulers work. So uh, you need them all really. So there's my five and a half. Let's give that a cut. And you're not gonna cut that in half or diagonal or anything. Just leave that hole and put that aside for now. For your seven inch square, if you've got a six and a half inch ruler, don't worry, you don't need to find a bigger ruler because most rulers are not wider than that. In this instance, you don't need to drag out a bigger ruler. You'll simply bring your fabric out of course, you've added some nice sizing, so it's got a lot of body. It's not going to stretch. You'll clean up your edge. I know that this ruler is six and a half inches wide, and I'm trying to cut a seven inch square. If I simply position this ruler, let me turn it even this way, which is even better. So that that those black targets are going right through my half inch. I know that that half inch plus the six and a half inches results in seven inches in length. And I'll make my cut. Okay, so that's a way to, what do you do when you want to use your ruler as your primary guidance, not your mat, to make your ruler kind of grow, so to speak. So let's put that out of the way for now. When you are using the fast flat, oh, we got to make it one more cut here. I'm like, that's not a square. Let's do that again then. Let's bring that ruler right back out. We'll line that up here. And we'll cut again. Now we're ready to go to our fast flying geese. When you are using the fast flying geese, how this works is this needs to be positioned exactly on these diagonals. For that reason, I like to use the Fonz and Porter quarter inch seam markers. I just love, this isn't usually what this is used for. This is usually, usually made for half square triangles. Um, but we found this useful here as well because we could lay this corner to corner, just like this. And now we have these targets. See how I'm off right here? I can hold that and just kind of bump my fabric. And that's pretty accurate. Now I think I need to scoot down here because I need to be here to here as well. So I'm gonna scoot that down this way. And you just wanna line those up. And then I'm gonna check it this direction as well. That looks right on the money, all right. So in that case, we just went ahead and pinned. I'll show you what we, what we did here. So I'll go ahead and pin. Now, now we will use the ruler in the way that it was normally intended. Corner to corner, just like such, I will go ahead and draw. Now I love that. I love that all I have to do now is, is sew on a drawn line. Even when I'm tired, I can usually sew on a drawn line. <laughs> when I'm tired, I can't always get a great quarter inch seam, but I can almost always at least sew on the line. Once you've done that, you've sewn on the line, we've done that ahead of time, you're at this place. As you would suspect, you'll take your ruler and trim corner to corner.
Now we'll take that to our pressing mat and you would normally expect, if you've watched my other videos, I'm going to press to the red. I'm not this time. I'm going to be pressing toward the white and that's just going to help the block as we see a little bit later on go together in this section right down here. And same with this one. I'll not show you the next phase, so this is going to make a little more sense to you. Do you see how this looks a little bit odd? <laughs> You're not used to having those big dog ears. Don't clip those off right now. You could, but it's not necessary. So you will simply stack, just repeat, repeat the sight picture you're seeing here. So that you've got red over here and red over here, stack one right on top of each other. It's a little bit of an unusual sight picture, so I wanted to show that to you, what it's going to look like, and then actually doing it. And just pin. Actually, let's, let's do that from this. So it's the same sight picture, so you're seeing everything. In fact, you can just, we'll just go with the one that's pinned. There's no point in me pinning it again. And we've, we've capped our pins out of the intersection because, again, we will come in with our ruler, our small ruler. By the way, this is a two-part pack. You have a smaller ruler and a longer ruler. So we could use the smaller ruler at this point if we wanted to. It fits. Again, we're going to draw the line, draw the line, sew, and now we'll cut. When you make the fast flying geese, using the fast flying geese method, you will get four, all four units out of those two squares, which to me is fantastic. We did it the two ways. We did the old fashioned way with the squares and the rectangle and made four that way. And we did four like this. This uses far less fabric, which I love that. I, I love using less fabric and getting more economy out of my fabric. Now that, now you, now that you have your unit, the first thing that you'll do is you see where this red ends and the red ends here. Halfway between that place, I'm going to make a snip. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm just eyeballing it. Make sure you don't uh, snip into your seam allowance. What this is allowing us to do once we come to our, uh, once we come to our pressing mat is this is allowing the seams to be opposite. So the block lies nice and flat. That's why you made the snip. All right. I'll show you that again. So we've got this seam that ends here and this one here. And you're just going to eyeball about midway. Don't clip into that seam allowance. Let's set the seam. Open that up and the seams will naturally go where they want to. Perfect. And let's go from the front. Make sure we didn't take a tuck from pressing from the back side. This is where we get to jump in and use the ruler. And I'm going to use the spinning mat and you'll see how they together just make the most perfect combination. So let's get out this spinning mat, get out this super cool ruler. I wanted to point out two things about the ruler. We've already talked about the directions being on here. There's two sides, trim one, can you, I don't know if the can, there we go, trim one, we'll use that first, and there's letter D. We'll be using that. Look at all the different sizes, A all the way to H. You can make a flying yeast unit a half by one, all the way up to four by eight. You talk about a versatile ruler, this has it. We'll do trim one first, and then we'll turn around, and we'll use trim tool number, trim number two, the side of, that side of the ruler will be trim two. So starting with one, First thing you want to identify is that's my goose. All right, you could easily get this wrong and start cutting here. Here's my goose, trim one, D. See how I'm just, there's that perfect triangle and I'm just fitting it in that slot. Now I'm going to cut here. Don't go too deep because you need to save that for your another, another unit. Come across. 
I'm going to rotate my mat. Now that automatically puts trim tool, trim number two up there. I'm going to slide that down. There's my D. Look at that coming into view. So look what I'm lining up on. I have my triangles. I have a guide on my left. I have a guide right here. I'll go ahead and cut here. Rotate. Oh, I bumped my scissors a little bit. That's okay. I'll line right back up. And you have a perfect flying geese unit. That is undeniably more accurate than I could absolutely ever do with a traditional method. So let me show you that again. I want to make sure you understand how to use this tool. It's really, really fun. So what's my goose? My goose is, is the red. So that's going to be going into this, that slot, that kind of saddle that for this particular block is D. I'll go ahead and trim. Notice I'm on trim number one. I'll continue to turn till this is now toward me. Trim tool, trim two, I should say, is here. Slide down till I'm D. Oh, let me adjust that just slightly. Here and here. Again, the accuracy of that is just fabulous. And then I would repeat that with this other unit and I would make two more. So that's how we're going to get our flying geese units put together. And I want to talk about the corner assembly. And after that, you're just putting the block together. So let's move on to the corner assembly. It's pretty straightforward. There's nothing surprising about it. But if you want your blocks to lie nice and flat, we discovered something really cool. And that is if, if you press in certain directions, it's going to help your block lay nice and flat. And you want that with any quilt. You want the blocks to lay nice and flat. So let's start over here on this corner. First thing we're going to do is we're going to bring that right side together. And let's go sew, sew a quarter inch seam allowance together. Now this time, again, kind of not my norm, we will go ahead and press toward the red. In the past, I've always pressed to the dark no matter what. That's not always the smartest thing to do because what I'm finding is a lot of bulk and seams unnecessarily. I always like to put my things back into position to make sure, I, did I sew that right? And that looks right to me. Now I'm going to bring this side into it, right here, and I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam. This time, we'll look at the logic of this. If I press toward the dark again, look what's going to happen. This confluence of seams is way too bulky. For that reason, I will press away from the red, this time toward the white, so that will lay nice and flat. So I wanted to show you the logic of why, why we're doing that. So we want to have a reason for doing what we're doing. And this is when I like to use my nice sharp Kai scissors. I don't, I use inexpensive threads to clip or inexpensive scissors to clip threads. But when it comes to fabric, I like to use my Kai scissors because they are so sharp. So that's that unit right there. Now the first thing, I, of course, you're going to see how they're going to sew together. But to check yourself, did I sew that accurately? One should really fit right over top of the other and it does. Fits beautifully. So let's go right sides together. We'll sew a quarter inch seam. I'm going to pin this because I've got bias going on here and I don't want any stretching happening. I'm going to pin it from this side, not out here where I'm removing the pins, but I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and you know what else I'm going to do? 
I'm actually going to pin it from this side because I don't want that flap to be on the underside and as I'm sewing it flips over on me. So I'm going to pin from this side. These pins, I love them. They're super sharp. They don't disturb the fabric. And I love the magnetic pin cushion because if I end up with a mess, all I have to do, and it puts them all in order too. And there's a finger slot where I can just pull any pins out. It's wonderful. So if you don't have a magnetic pin cushion, just get one. You'll absolutely love it. And if you spill your pins, it's not a big deal. In this instance, I'm going to press to the, let's see, I think we pretty much pressed toward the dark. We sure did. Set that seam. Press toward the green. I'll use my Kai scissors. If you do have little ones running around, I would keep those out of reach. They're super sharp. I've cut myself on them more than once, so just be careful. Let's move that. We don't need that anymore. So that's how you put your corner together, and of course you're just going to make four of those. Once you have your flying geese units, you have your center, and you have your four corners, as you would suspect, at that point, in fact I'll even show you the back of the block, you're simply sewing this to this to this. We went ahead and pressed away from the center. So the center three sections together. You know, you've got your flying geese units you're going to sew together. And with the flying geese units, let me point that out. Because you have bulk, we can look at this real, real quick. Because you have bulk kind of going on here and here and here, just press them open. And that's what we did here. We went ahead and pressed, sew those together and press the seam open. Then when you sew that to the middle unit, just press toward the middle because there's no bulk here. So go ahead and press to that. These go away, those to the center, those away. And then when you sew those together, you're just going to press your seams open like we did here. So, uh, you know, using the tiramisu block, making the tiramisu block with the flying, fast flying geese is an absolute dream. If you learned something today, you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.